Blessings, beloveds. Welcome back to my channel. Anastasia, Cosmic Astrologer, here today sharing some, some teachings. So today I've decided to talk about secondary progressions, but the, uh, the focus is actually going to be um, when you were born, you may have been born with um, Mercury retrograde, Venus retrograde, or Mars retrograde. Now, it is um, fairly typical for people to be born with Mercury retrograde. I happen to be one of those people. Um, first things first, Mercury goes retrograde three times per year. Now, we most of us are aware of that because there is um, such a... <laughs> Uh, th this, there's just so much that's said about Mercury retrograde. Um, as soon as Mercury goes retrograde, there's all these posts, there's all these comments, there's all these um, blogs, there's videos, there's all sorts of stuff. So, you know, uh, Mercury retrograde gets a lot of attention. I think um, Venus retrograde gets a lot of attention and she should as well, but she does not go retrograde as often. In fact, um, she goes retrograde about every uh, 18 months or so. Now, just going back to Mercury, when Mercury goes retrograde, um, that retrograde period lasts for approximately 21, 22, 23 days, around there, 24 including the station periods. So people can be born with any of those three planets retrograde. Now, when... Um, when you are working with secondary progressions, and I'm, I, I'm not going to teach the method of secondary progressions in this video, that, that would be um, quite a long video and that probably would be another one. But for those of you that are familiar with secondary progressions, uh, the technique is based on one day of Earth life equals one year in secondary progressions. So when you are looking at your secondary progress chart and you um, click over, or when you're looking down in the ephemeris, now, um, where's my ephemeris? I have a couple of um, ephemeris. This, this is one of them. If, if you are serious about learning astrology, you really do need to invest in these sorts of books. The computer will um, make things a lot easier. There's no question about that because it's just a click of a button and off you go. But if you really want to understand what's happening in, in the heavens with regards to the movement of the planets, I advise that you invest in an ephemeris and become familiar with the tables in this book because you can simply just pick it up. You can have a look at today's date, for example, and um, so let me just show you, where are we? We are we're still in November of 2018, right? <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's what it looks like inside. You can't really see very much, but that's okay because I'm, I'm not here to, to go through this uh, specifically. But I just want to show you, if you open this book up and you go to the month of November 2018, you will see the month of November in this box here. And it shows you, let me just see, the position of all the planets above, including the North Node, um, the true North Node, as it's called in the uh, ephemeris here. And as you go down the column down here, you will see, you know, day one, day two, day three, etc., of the month of November. And if you look down below each column, you can see the symbols of the planets. And you can see, I think that's Mercury, if I'm correct. You can see where Mercury was on the 1st of November, the 2nd, 3rd, etc., etc. Now, what, what this is really good for is to just to simply show you the movement of the planets to begin with. And also you can very quickly see when Mercury went retrograde, for instance, um, and when it will go direct again. Uh, and you can see that with every other single planet as well. 
Now, Mercury is the one that goes retrograde frequently. It's three times a year. Venus only goes retrograde um, about every 18 months or so. And that retrograde period lasts for 42 days. Um, Mars goes retrograde about every two years. So that's even less frequent. And that period lasts for about 80 days. So it's quite long. And naturally, the further we go out with the planets, um, the longer they stay in their retrograde period because of how much slower they move. Now, I'm not going to be discussing uh, any of the other planets today. I just want to focus on Mercury, Venus and Mars because if you are born with any of those three planets in retrograde, at some stage in your life, certainly with Mercury, and um, possibly with the other two planets, depending on where you were born in terms of where was the retrograde Venus or where was the retrograde Mars when you were born? Was it you know, at the beginning of its cycle? Was it in the middle? Was it at the end and so forth? That's going to make a difference of when it goes direct via progression. So um, for example, uh, I was born with Mercury retrograde and I was probably, I, I was born into the midway cycle of that retrograde period. So what happened was when I was 13 years old, via progression, my Mercury went direct. Now, the first thing is when you are born, uh, and I tried to find an example um, other than my own of uh uh, no, sorry, of uh, Venus or Mars retrograde, either in a famous people or in uh, a famous person's chart or in some of the readings of clients I've done, you know, over time. I only spent about 10 minutes looking and I actually couldn't find one. So it is much more rare to be born with Venus retrograde or Mars retrograde. But it is highly significant when one is born with any of those three inner planets retrograde. Now, the sun and the moon can never go retrograde, by the way, just in case you didn't know. So we, when we are looking at this um, retrograde stationary direct um, cycle and period, we are looking at it in relation to every single planet from Mercury and onwards. Um, the, in the same way that when Mercury goes retrograde, for instance, throughout the year, the... Um, the focus and the understanding around it is that um, there's there's an internalization of the process of that planet. So it's a it's a going backwards literally because the, the planet moving retrograde appears to be moving backwards from from our standpoint on this Earth plane, but in, in reality, in truth, the planets don't actually move back. It's just the the way we view the heavens from uh, our position here on earth so the the meaning and the symbolism is is more of it, it's exactly that it's a symbolism in terms of what it means when a planet appears to be going backwards and the the most traditional view is that it's a period of introspection revaluation re reflection um, reassessment revisiting and so forth so um, when you are born with Mercury retrograde, then there's a the way to understand that is that the mercurial function in you, in how Mercury uh, is expressed for you, is very much on an internal level, and that that can be a number of different things. It can be the person who's very deep, very reflective. Um, really considers things for long periods of time, is very introspective, doesn't re is not very open with their uh, most inner, deepest thoughts and reflections and ideas and things like that. It's a very deep developmental inner learning process that occurs for the individual that's very private and very subtle and that's not seen by others. Um, so by progression, when Mercury goes direct for you or for anybody, that's a, a, very, um, a very significant turning point in the person's life relating to all things Mercury. Now, of late, I've actually just done a couple of readings for people who uh, had Mercury going direct 
in their uh, later part of life. One was, uh, this person was in their 40s, another person was in their 60s. Um, so this, this marked very significant turning points in the individual's life for their ability um, to communicate and express themselves, essentially. It, it means a lot more than that, but the point I'm just trying to make is it's very important to pay attention to this. If Mercury was retrograde when you were born, then via progression at some stage in your life, it will turn direct. Um, if you were born with Venus retrograde, then you need to look at that. You need to look at every year. So for example, let's just say that you were born on the 1st of November, 2018. Um, Mercury went retrograde on the 17th of November of 2018. Now, most of us know that. So let's just say a baby was born on the 1st of November. So going, um, to, uh, pardon me, going retrograde on the 17th of um, November, this person was born with Mercury direct in the sign of Sagittarius on the 1st of November 2018. Now, if you, if you just go down the ephemeris and have a look at when Mercury went retrograde, which was on the 17th of November, you will see it because it has the degree, the sign, um, and it has a, the letter R in this column as well. So it's showing you that Mercury goes retrograde at 13 degrees of Sagittarius um, on the 17th of November. Now that's the reverse of what I was just saying because this person was born with Mercury uh, direct but at the age of around about 17, their Mercury goes uh, retrograde by progression. So that can happen as well. You can be born with Mercury retrograde and it turns direct at some stage in your life or you can be born with Mercury moving direct and at some stage in your life it will go retrograde. And there's obviously very different meanings and the most obvious uh, meanings to both is if you're born with Mercury direct and it goes retrograde by progression at some stage in your life, then there's a reshift and refocus internalization of your whole Mercury function. So there's a, a deep learning developmental process that will occur. And if it goes direct by progression because you were born with a retrograde, then that mercurial function will become externalized because you were born with it operating and functioning on an internal level. And you can, you can apply those same basic principles to um, Venus um, being retrograde when you were born or Mars being retrograde when you were born or Venus turning retrograde throughout your life at some stage via progression or Mars um, turning retrograde via progression at some stage in your life, which is certainly less frequently. It is Mercury that gets um, the, the most of the retrograde periods and, and, and direct periods. Um, so uh, just a couple of things I want to read, if I may. Uh, okay, so when a progressed retrograde planet reaches its station and is about to finally turn direct. So what this is saying is that you were born with a planet retrograde, such as Mercury, Venus or Mars. And at some stage, it's going to station, in other words, stop to change direction. Station just means station standing still so if a planet is retrograde when you're born it will reach a station point and then it will change gears and turn the other way and move direct if a, if a planet is retrograde when you were born at some stage it will reach a station point um and pardon me if if a planet was direct when you were born at some stage it may reach a station period before it actually turns retrograde, okay? 
So what this guy says, and this book is fantastic, and I'll show you this book because I highly recommend you invest in it if you are serious about astrology. He says the individual during that specific progressed year is reaching a major turning point in his inner growth pattern. This particular year could mark a significant shift in one's attention described by the nature of the planet involved, such as whether it's Mercury, Venus or Mars, and, and equally so to any of the other planets as well, because clearly the other planets um, have a cycle of moving retrograde and direct as well and stationary. Um, it might symbolically mean that the individual's internal prep, prep, preparation period of deeper assimilation and integration is reaching completion. He's, uh, he's to now center his inner focus upon the objective world once again and begin to use the energies of this planet to influence external matters. So this is relating to a progressed, so you're born with Mercury retrograde, right? And at some stage, it's going to turn direct in your life. So that's what this is relating to. Or you're born with Venus retrograde some stage it may turn direct in your life and the same with mars so what i just read to you applies to when you were born with a planet retrograde and at some stage it goes direct in your life this is how it basically uh this is the energy that it brings in the year of your life that it actually goes um, direct via progression um the individual can now mobilize such energies outward from his own center and create a greater impact in his surroundings. Although he may show much depth of understanding concerning this planet. And the reason he says that is because when you are born um, with Mercury, Venus or Mars retrograde, you pretty much, while it's retrograde throughout your life, until and if it goes direct and if it's Mercury, it will, um, that the, the process and the function, the manifestation of that planet is all experienced internally. It's very, very different, you know, to a planet moving direct, you know, when you're talking about Mars, Mercury, Venus, because those three planets really have to do um, with the external sort of expression that we have in relation to how we communicate, um, how we speak, how we learn, how we share ideas and so forth. Mercury, if it's Venus, then, you know, Venus has two functions in the sense of it has an inward function and an externalized function because it's ruled, uh, it rules the signs Taurus and Libra. The Taurus component of Venus being ruled by, um, Taurus being ruled by Venus, the Taurus component is the, the inner um, sort of function and embodiment of the Venusian qualities and, and energies. And the Libra um, ruled component part is more about our relationships and how we relate to uh, the people around us, how we, um, how we relate in relationships, how we love, how we share and so forth. So there's two very different functions of Venus. When somebody is born with Venus retrograde, because the Venus function is internalized, you can say that this person, their Venus operates very much in that Taurian way. It's an, it's an internalized experience of Venus. And these people tend to be more private. They tend to not have many relationships as well. And if they do have relationships, they are often seeking a partner who mirrors a very similar journey and experience in their life which is about inner empowerment, inner understanding, and inner uh, evolution. In terms of the evolutionary path of the soul, the implications of one being born with Venus retrograde is that the soul has chosen very distinctly and clearly and specifically to, uh, to specifically revisit and reevaluate many different functions of the way Venus has operated for them. And in addition to that, they will very specifically draw partners in the current life that they have had relationships with before in past lives because there are some very specific, unfinished evolutionary lessons of the Venus retrograde person that they really want to evolve through this lifetime. 
th those are some of the evolution, soul evolutionary implications with Venus retrograde. And it is a similar, um, if not the same, experience with Mars, if you're born with Mars retrograde from an evolutionary perspective. Now, Mars and Venus retrograde are not easy things to be born into. They can be very, very challenging and especially Mars, because Mars is the planet of one's drive, willpower, sexual energy, uh, confidence, um, assertion, aggression, um, desire to, you know, uh, put yourself out there and, and basically achieve your goals. So when Mars is retrograde, you know, that can be a very challenging experience for an individual because it can feel like an internalized sense of frustration with their anger and so forth because they can't externalize it. It's an internalized experience. But there is a very specific soul purpose to the person being born with Mars retrograde. And there are some very specific soul lessons that the person has chosen to undergo with Mars, being born with Mars retrograde. Um, So he says here that if you were born, um, if a planet goes um, retrograde via progression throughout your life at some stage, such as uh, Mercury, Mars or Venus, the transition of that, because now this is the reverse of what I was just saying, the transition of that can be a lot more difficult because imagine living 30 years of your life with um, Mercury being direct or Venus or Mars and then suddenly it goes retrograde. That's an incredibly powerful transition um, and an incredibly challenging um, year to be able to, to, to have. You have to go into it because it's, it's turning retrograde. You've really got no choice in that. Um, but it's very challenging because you've just spent 30 years operating with your, your Venus, Mars or, or Mercury being externalized, you know, experiencing any of those planetary energies from an externalized perspective and view and experiential path. And now suddenly you're being asked to turn that back in and internalize it and start to experience something entirely different relating to any of those three planets. So that transition is much more difficult than a planet um, going from retrograde to direct via progression throughout your life. They're very different, um, very different transitions. And this guy says that um, the ones, as I just said, the ones that go retrograde via progression at some stage in your life are a lot more difficult to adjust to. Um, and what he says about this, about a planet going retrograde by progression throughout your life is this. Uh, he says, um, the person undergoes a turning point in development. However, this condition could prove to be more difficult an adjustment for some since one is now to begin to turn within after being conditioned from birth to function upon the worldly surface of mundane life. This transition could thus appear more like a crisis for those who have never considered the urges of the planet from a more introspective view. The individual tends to feel this transition more deeply since energies are now directing themselves towards his personal centre and away from the normal external interests. Things seem to become uh, to a normal, uh, pardon me, things seem to come to an abrupt halt and make a sudden turnabout psychologically, which could be very, very intense. Constructively, this pattern denotes a time period where the individual can deepen and enrich his awareness of the principles indicated relating to the planetary energy. 
So those are some of the comments. Uh, oh, by the way, this is the book that I'm reading from. I've shown this book before in other videos and I'm showing it to you again because it is by far the best book written in terms of understanding um, the process of planets going direct at some stage in your life by progression or going retrograde at some stage by progression in your life. And this is a phenomenon that occurs um, in life for everybody at some stage uh, with different planets. Um, what else did I want to just quickly mention? I mentioned that. Um, <clears throat> I just would like to read a couple of comments. This is another book that I would highly recommend by Jeffrey Wolf Green. Um, so when Jeffrey Wolf Green talks about Venus retrograde, he basically talks about it from an evolutionary, uh, the soul's evolutionary path and what the implications are, which I've already touched on but perhaps just a couple of other more comments that might be of interest to you. Uh, when Venus is retrograde at birth, the individual consequently internalizes the Venus function. This means that such an individual is oriented to establishing an inner relationship with themselves as a primary focus in life. So that's very different to uh, a Venus not being retrograde, a Venus being just direct, you know, when you were born because Venus is the planet of relationships and how we relate and share in the world and with people around us and people we love. And that includes friends as well. Um, but certainly, you know, our lovers or our partners um, and so forth. So to have Venus operating in this internalized way, there's something that the soul really needs to evolve through in terms of understanding their own self and how they relate. To their own self. Now, in my opinion, from a psychological and a spiritual and emotional and mental perspective, the, the most important relationship you will um, heal and cultivate and develop is the one with yourself, quite apart from the one uh, with the divine with source. Because um, the relationship that you have with yourself in terms of, you know, um, how much you accept yourself, love yourself, care for yourself, understand yourself, um, desire to consciously evolve and grow, expand your consciousness and learn, all those things will really reflect then the types of relationships you have as well. So the relationship with yourself is super, super important. Um, and when somebody is born with Venus retrograde, that is emphasized even more so in terms of the, the soul's evolution. Um, he says that as a result, meaning uh, people born with Venus retrograde, uh, as a result, such people inwardly hear and respond to a very different drama. They create a very different inner vibration or magnetism because Venus is the principle of magnetism. It's the magnetic forces. When you are looking at Venus in a woman's chart, that, that can tell you almost everything about a woman in terms of her femininity, uh, and everything that describes femininity for a woman, that is seen through the Venus principle and function. It's the magnetic force that a woman has in terms of what she attracts in her, in her life regarding relationships, money, beauty, art, creativity, all those things. Um, so the, the magnetic principle of Venus is very, very powerful when somebody has a very healthy Venus in their birth chart. When somebody has a challenged Venus, the principle of magnetism is also challenged and therefore the ability to attract what you want, what you desire, what you need is a lot more challenging. Um, they create a very different inner vibrational magnetism that serves to attract others who are similarly vibrating or resonating. Individuals who rebel against the normal way of living 
according to the consensus of society in general and the normal forms of relationship specifically. So what he's saying there is that a person who's born with Venus retrograde is going to be more of a rebellious type of soul. They are not going to seek the conventional relationship. So you might find that a lot more gay, lesbian people, queer, you know, transgender, all those sorts of uh, definitions of, of people experiencing relationships in a very different way, you might find that Venus is retrograding those people's charts quite a bit. In terms of a straight heterosexual person, that could just be the individual who is doesn't view the world of relationships from the model that's been projected onto society for eons, which is man, woman, get married, have children, etc. Um, that's the standard sort of you know uh, projection of what a relationship is supposed to look like. But there are many souls on this planet who do not view the world of relationships in that way and are not do not have the desire to experience the world of relationships in that way. So people with Venus retrograde are more likely to be like this, that they will be more rebellious in their uh, approach to relationships. They will be the Uranian type of people, you could say. It's a Uranus sort of energy. Um, so then he says, because of this deep internalization of the Venus function, the Venus retrograde person relates to others in a very different way. He or she is deeply self-introspective individual that psychologists would classify as an introverted type. Being introverted, the Venus in retrograde person thus creates an aura or atmosphere around them in which there is a buffer that does not allow others to penetrate into their inner reality. It's very, very fascinating, very interesting. As a result, the Venus retrograde person appears to be enigmatic or difficult to understand the enigma. Have you ever met people like that? I have, and they fascinate me. This buffer creates a condition in which other people typically project onto the Venus retrograde person uh, the realities that they represent. Venus understanding, uh, pardon me, there was a comma there. Let me just read that again. Venus retrograde person. Let me just start that again. Um, this buffer creates a condition in which other people typically project onto the Venus retrograde person the realities that they represent. Venus understanding their actual reality. So basically saying that a person who has... Venus retrograde during their birth while they were born, they will, the, the people that they attract in their life, because of their very strong buffer and no one can really penetrate through them, the other people will project their own version of reality or, or the version of relationships that they see as um, what they believe about relationships onto the Venus retrograde person because they can't penetrate into the Venus retrograde person. That can create a lot of... Um, complexities I think uh, because this happens so often it has the continuing effect of keeping the Venus retrograde person deeply withdrawn from the environment this reaction to others projections is a form of the survival instinct as embodied in the Taurus side of Venus so there's some comments for you um, to help you understand a little bit more about when you were born with Venus retrograde and obviously from an evolutionary point, there is a difference if you're born with it retrograde or if it goes retrograde at some stage in your life. But I think in general terms, the meaning is somewhat the same because the soul is desiring to experience the whole world of relationships, the Venusian quality, the magnetic principle and force of relating and understanding oneself in, in a much more profound, deeper way in terms of the soul's evolutionary path and the soul's desires. So I think I'll leave it there. I just really wanted to bring a bit of an intro into uh, encouraging you guys if you're not already doing that or if you're new to astrology and if you're learning, this is something that's incredibly valuable to pay attention to your own life in uh, charts that you might start exploring and, and working with and so forth 
the the principle of um, planets being retrograde or direct when you were born is incredibly important. And just one final note that I'd leave you guys with is this secondary progressions um, operate very, very different to when you are assessing um, transiting planets, for instance, to your natal chart. So, you know, your, your sun sign, for example, will, will change signs a couple of times through your life via progression, at least a couple of times. So you might have been born a Pisces, for instance. Say you were born with the sun at 15 degrees of Pisces. Well, when you are 15, um, uh, yes, when you are 15 years old, then the sun will progress into the sign of Aries. So one day equals one year. Okay, that's the method that you need to remember with secondary progressions. Um, my Pluto, I was born with Pluto um, retrograde and Pluto aspects everything in my chart. I, my life is a very Plutonian life, very Plutonian in so many different ways. That's not an easy life, by the way. And, you know, Pluto takes 248 years to return to its natal position. So no one has a Pluto return unless they live to be 248. <laughs> now, most people are born with Pluto retrograde, very typical. I was born with Pluto retrograde. And um, next year, I think it's next year or the year after, no, it's next year, Pluto for me goes direct via progression. That's a pretty rare occurrence to have that happen um, simply because of how long Pluto uh, stays in his retrograde cycle, which is about five months. So for Pluto to be going direct in my life, that's the implications of that from a soul evolutionary path and spiritual growth is um, out of this world. And I'm so excited and I can't wait to step into that um, new journey for my own self. So anyway, that's just something as a side note, personally for me sharing with you. So check out what's going on in your own chart. You know, check out what is retrograde when you were born. Then look down the effectors, or if you're using a computer system, um, you just step by one day at a time. That one day you move your chart over equals one year. So you do that until you see a planet that when you were born is retrograde, eventually goes direct. So if it's 30 days after your birth, that is equal to 30 years after your birth. Hopefully that's clear. If you've got any questions or any comments about this subject today, please feel free to leave them below. Um, I'm more than happy to answer your questions as I always say, and please feel free to connect and engage with each other as well. Um, thank you so much for subscribing and for following and for supporting um, my offerings and uh, sending you all much love and blessings. And there's a police car. So loud. Um, and yeah, happy full moon, guys. It's a full moon in Gemini today. It's the uh, 23rd of November, 2018. I was going to do a video about the full moon, but I just didn't get around to it. I was busy doing some other work. Um, but there's lots of stuff out there about the full moon in Gemini. I'm sure you guys will find it all. Um, many blessings for this uh, lovely full moon. I will say this, uh, this full moon in Gemini, because it's the uh, Gemini Sagittarius axis and Jupiter is in Sagittarius, the sun's just gone into Sagittarius, there's so much Sagittarius energy. There's, um, I think uh, this full moon is going to stir up some things from the level of communication and ideas and what people have said to one another perhaps. Um, so it's, it's a real, um, things will come to light in terms of the sharings and offerings that have taken place over the past couple of weeks. 
uh, with the communications across the board. So yeah, have a look at what that is for you because naturally you need to see where the full moon lands in your birth chart to get uh, more of a feel, um, but it will light things up and shine things up in that area of life for you. See you guys soon. Much love and blessings. Bye.